Welcome to Sailing Floating Freedom. I'm Matt. This is Peggy. Our son Will. And our doggo keeper. Follow along as we try and break free from everyday routine and explore the beautiful waters of British Columbia and beyond on Floating Freedom. Okay. On this episode, we do an anchor and chain upgrade before we head over to DeCourcy Island. So to ensure we got some good sleeps, we upgraded 200 feet of chain and a 20 kg rock nut. We added an additional 200 feet of chain to the existing 70 feet using a Crosby link. To lock the Crosby link, there are four posts that have to be hammered over to lock it in. I found using a three pound sledge and a punch with the vise did a quick job of it. Good morning guys. We are on our way to DeCourcy Island today. It's Saturday morning, uh, Father's Day weekend, so out for a little weekender. Uh, DeCourcy is about 12 nautical miles, hey Matt? Yeah, that's from, about right. From Nanaimo. Um, the winds are going to be really light today. I think they're predicting about 5 knots from the northwest, so hopefully we'll get a chance to get the sails up. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, running a little bit behind schedule today. I forgot the coffee, which I'm not gonna do. So I had to run out to the store to grab coffee. Um, we're on a bit of a time schedule because we're gonna hit Dodds Narrows at Slack Tide, which is, or we're hoping to, uh, around 12.15. So, so we're on our way and uh, we'll catch up with you later. And get some Brother 12 gold. We're going to find the mason jars of hidden gold that are supposedly on the island somewhere. Yeah, we'll tell you the story of Brother 12 in a little bit. Fingers crossed we'll do some sailing today. If not some sailing, we're going to do some damn good anchoring. Yeah, we haven't anchored on this boat yet. Glad you joined us today because a couple that can anchor together can stay together. <laughs> We're not anchored yet. No. Ooh. <laughs> I guess it's a lot of flat rock here, so I could just hear it just skimming across the bottom. So we uh, pulled up 150 feet, and this is attempt two. Depth's 43, so that's good. Gives us a three to one scope. So now if we can just go in reverse to about 1500 RPM and not move. Oh, well that was epic. Yeah. <laughs> what a whirlwind. Just got here. First anchoring was unsuccessful. I think it was all just solid rock. So just dragging and skipping across. Then we just ultimately just kept backing up with the anchor out until it caught. And then uh, tested it a few times and there's no current or wind. Sort of screw it. And it's hot. It is hot. Just sweating my butt off here. Yeah. You know, the solar we have uh, temporarily installed, so it's all wired into the batteries, just uh, waiting on the final connections to go on top of the Dodger when that arrives. Well, happy Father's Day. Oh, thank you. Open your gift. Oh, is this for me? <laughs> oh, no, it's for me. Ooh. Oh, it fits nice. Does it? I oh, wasn't yeah. sure if it was going to be too small. No. Oh, it's very nice. Oh, it's good. It's good on you. Oh, that'll keep, uh, you like it? Yeah. Oh, is there more? Oh, mm -hmm. my very own floating, freeding Yeti cup. 
A fender step. It's soaking wet. Oh, how did it get wet? Oh, there's a water oh, bottle in here. Great. Happy Father's Day. And it's a sailboat. Yeah. It got wet. Sorry. Yeah. Well, sailboats get wet. Yeah. Love on. you, Dad. Will. <laughs> P.S. I'm sorry about the dress incident. That's okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> there's no P.S. <laughs> oh. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So hopefully that will. Good fishing Channel with? your inner fisherman. For my jigging yeah. for rock cod tomorrow? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're just going to go around the point. I think we drop the trap and go do some jiggy jiggeroo. Jiggy jiggeroo. Edward Arthur Wilson was an English mystic who traveled to Canada in 1927 after hearing the voice of an Egyptian deity telling him to prepare for a great task. He created a spiritual community named the Aquarian Foundation in Cedar-by-the-Sea, a small community south of Nanaimo, and later expanded to De Courcy and Valdez Islands. He took the name Brother Twelve. He had a devout following of wealthy socialites that would donate to his cause of creating a self-sufficient community. Followers from as far as Europe would send money to support the Aquarian Foundation. By the late 1920s, an uprising within the ranks of the cult began after misuse of foundation funds and an extramarital affair with Madame Z. This would lead to the breakup of the colony. Some of the members stuck with Brother Twelve, but he became increasingly dictatorial and paranoid, fortifying the island kingdom and reportedly accumulating a fortune in gold. When the remaining colony members filed lawsuits to reclaim their money, Brother Twelve destroyed the colony, burned down the buildings, and scuttled his ship, Lady Royal, before disappearing forever. Countless rumors exist of jars of gold being hidden on the island and high-ranking cult leaders fleeing across the globe with treasure and even fabricating their own deaths to evade prosecution. Today, De Courcy Island is mostly privately owned, non-serviced, with the exception of a 43-hectare provincial marine park. Pirate's Cove offers a protected anchorage, dinghy dock, tent camping, and an extensive trail network. There is also an anchorage on the south end of the island between Ruxton Island and De Courcy. The marina is privately owned and does not offer temporary or transient mortgage. The anchorage on the south side of the island offers great protection from northerly winds and a sandy beach. Just south of De Courcy Island is Ruxton, which offers nice day anchorages. I wouldn't mind going on the Brother 12 trail and then we can go all the way around and back. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. I don't think it's too far. No. I don't. It's a different type of forest. Yeah, the t trees are really skinny. Not as many ferns. Well, not no ferns. Like in Nanaimo, it's all lush. green carpet.
on Brother 12 Trail. Is this where the gold is? Is that mom? Okay, Peg, so from last trip, we've had a pretty substantial upgrade to our bimini from the red and white umbrella. <laughs> Boom! It's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. Oops. Spoiler alert, still no Dodger and bimini. Day 612. <laughs> I'm gonna make some chicken burgers with cheese tonight. Oh, that sun is glorious. Glorious! Hopefully we can uh, get some fish on this barbecue this trip. Here's my attempt at gracefully exiting the kayak. And then almost losing it. Well, we finally get to try this bottle of wine. Uh, shortly after we got to the marina, a uh, guy in the slip next to us just kind of hijacked me, and we ended up using our little tender to drag his uh, 35 foot boat over to the lift so it could get yarded out and get a new engine put in. And um, him and his wife were so kind to give us a bottle of their favorite wine, so this is our first opportunity to have it on the new cockpit table so yeah. cheers Robert much appreciated and see the clip here of yeah. Matt towing the boat <laughs> <laughs> would you like to sniff the cap yeah maybe cheers, cheers. thanks Robert <laughs> okay Will is our 2021 crab season gonna be better than our 2020 crab season thumbs up Woohoo! Alright, the boy and I are gonna go drop the crab trap and see if we can do better than we did last year. Which would be absolutely anything would be an improvement. Good luck, buddy. Okay. It's the first time we're gonna pull the crab <laughs> crab trap up. Oh. Sorry. Right. First time this year. After a very unsuccessful last season of crabbing. <laughs> so anything at all would be a hundred percent improvement. Here we go. Da -da -da. Feet of okay, should I pause this for a minute? Many minutes later. Who's the big catch? Nothing? Oh. Are we too deep now? Mm. I'm gonna dunk it again while we're here. Yeah, might as well. New spot? Okay, attempt to drop the crab trap. This time it's quite, quite a bit shallower, I figure of maybe 30 feet deep. Yeah, so try that. What is the ideal depth for crabbing? It's somewhere between 20 and 2,000 fathoms, from what I understand. <laughs> I have no idea. All right, comment below. What is the Please. ideal depth for Someone out there has to know how to crab. <laughs> Give us some tips. This is getting stale. Yeah. Yeah, so send us some crabbing tips. Every good tip we get, we'll send you a sticker. Floating Brand freedom sticker. Floating sti freedom sticker. Fresh yeah. off the press. You can put it on your Yeti. Yeah. <laughs> Here they come. Where's the crab? You got one? Yeah. A big enough one? Sweet. Ooh, there it is. First crab. That's exciting. He's scared of getting pinched. <laughs> Oh. And then all this stuff you just slurp up. No. <laughs> little uh, accompaniment to the uh, steaks for dinner for Father's Day. Yes. Yay. Happy Father's Day. 
Well, I could not have asked for a better Father's Day. How are you feeling, Capo? Feeling good. It's a good day. What's our speed? Uh, right now, four points. So the next day, on the way home, we lucked out with a little bit of wind and got to do some sailing. So even with the boat heeled right over, Will still had time to make some Mr. Noodles. So as we rounded Duke Point, that would be a wrap for this trip. Well, it's 35 degrees for reals down here. I think it's actually 37. It's so hot. And for those of you who don't live in Canada and maybe live in warmer climates, that's hot for this us. This is like Central Mexico <laughs> weather. It's not that hot us in June. We're used to low 20s, so this is upwards of twice as hot as we're used to. Came out fast. And I've been uh, upside down and backwards in this chain locker for the last four hours. Um, troubleshooting the windlass, but I got her beat. Woo. Nice job. All right, yeah. so we finally got the windlass working. Pegs up the helm. We're gonna try this for the first time, pull an anchor the smart way. Oh yeah. It's up. Well guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give us a like, subscribe, it won't cost you a red cent. And stay tuned for the next couple videos as we get into Desolation Sound.